Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a scintillating Seamaster, possibly the most potent visual take on the Aquaterra I have ever encountered. This is a watch 41.5 millimeters in stainless steel that looks like a giant on the wrist because it has so much presence. It features a lacquered transferred wave black dial with a gloss topping and as you can see those waves coexist with applique rose gold indices logo and hands. The case is universal in its size. 13 millimeters thick you can wear it easily underneath the cuff. Lug to lug 48.2 millimeters and the timepiece 41.5 with 20 millimeter lug spacing can be worn comfortably on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Again my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference to give scale. The bracelet is a handsome piece and securely differentiated from the Oyster 3 link Rolex has its own famous three-link design. Here you can see Omega really plows its own furrow. This is nothing like the Oyster. You have staggered link alignment, staggered link size, variations on the polish. You have both the polish and the linear satin finish, polished outer faces. It's sized using screws, no pin sleeves here. It's a twin trigger, double deployant, so small wrist friendly. Having the double swing arms means it's not going to pinch the wrist the way a single swing arm deployant can, and having triggers means it can't accidentally pop open. Note it features half links for precise sizing. Running to the case, you can see those flared bevels and lyre style lugs as well as the linear sheer satin case band that we've come to know and love from Seamasters and Speedmasters since at least the mid-60s. This is the pre-2017 Seamaster case, so there's still a little bit of a countersunk nestling shoulder for the crown itself. It sits in between those sheer guards and gets a little bit more protection as a result. This pre-2017 dial, as you can see, features that wave design, but also the characteristics of its time, as the date is located at 3 o'clock rather than 6. Take a look at the sunken channel outboard. It's a matte black. The dial center features both those waves and a gloss treatment. Let's see how close we can get. Get close. Get in focus. Okay. Now you can see the waves to good effect as well as the effect of the red gold on the black base. The one pops off the other. It is a handsome watch and very compelling. Now the timepiece is also quite precise as it is a Omega coaxial chronometer. COSC certified with the tangential contact tri-level 8500 caliber, so a purpose-built coaxial, not an adapted ETA. You pull the crown out all the way, it allows you to hack or stop the seconds and set the watch precisely. You pull the crown to an intermediate position, now you have the ability to step the hour hand independently, and you can see how I could drive the date in either direction. That allows me to cross the international date line and travel, and the watch keeps time throughout that interval. It doesn't actually stop the timepiece. If you're wondering what happens at that point, well, you just roll through the day change, just like that. The case back and the screw down crown, endowing the watch with 150 meter water resistance. So, though this is the Surf Turf Seamaster, it's not a dive watch. Nevertheless, this is no mildly water resistant dress timepiece. Twin main spring barrels. 60 hour power reserve, because of the twin barrels, not only do you get a longer power reserve, you can see them right under their bridge, but you actually get better torque release from max wind to minimum wind. Most single barrel movements see a massive loss of balance amplitude and thus precision after 24 hours. Not so here. That's what the twin barrels bring to the table. The movement features a number of refinements to increase its toughness. It has a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism, and it features a free-sprung balance with a full bridge for shock resistance. The coaxial escapement helps the watch to keep excellent time by reducing power requirements so that the, the power reserve lasts longer. The watch won't stop. Reducing maintenance requirements. In the long term, you can wear the watch longer before it needs to get service, so it's not going to run slow or run fast fast after an inordinately short period, and it is cool tech. Originally conceived by George Daniels, independent watchmaker extraordinaire, industrialized by Omega, and with the purpose-built coaxial 8500s, it's really hit its stride. 39 jewel movement, you can see spiral Cote de Genève in arabesque across the bridges and plates, as well as blackened rather than polished or blued screws. The whole thing beats way to quirky beat rate, too. Against the ear, it sounds like no other movement, with a rate of 25,200 vibrations per hour, and Omega, of course, with the might of Swatch Group behind it, making everything in this watch from the lubricants to the shock protection that is unique to Omega timepieces and Swatch Group products. So a hell of a lot of pedigree inside this versatile timepiece. One of my favorite Aquaterras, and indeed one of my favorite Speedmaster variants I have ever encountered. This lacquer black wave dial rose gold index Aquaterra is simply a scintillating Seamaster. See it on the watch box. Omega Seamaster black wave dial, blue by night.